Hi everyone. Today's the last day of October, or Inktober, and I thought I'd show you how much fun you can have with watercolor and ink. I'm painting an iguana that's been lit by a hot pink light, and the colors are very strange. First I'm putting the background in. We've got a flat purplish blue with a blazing pink orange branch with purple bark textures. Now I'm laying in the colors I see on the iguana. I think it's a male. Since I'll be using ink later, I've drawn him a bit darker than normal, and I've already dotted some masking fluid on the spikes on its back and the white highlights. There weren't too many, and they were all small. So you can see that the light is really influencing the iguana's back and head, and also that front leg, which is sort of a yellow-orange. The shadowy areas contain more cool colors like purple, blue, and green. I love the variety of shapes and textures of this iguana's skin. It has hundreds of little bumps that look like they were outlined, so that's why I thought watercolor and ink would work really well here. The spikes on the iguana's back are casting blue shadows down its side. I'm making that blue more prominent. Then I'll add more intense oranges and pinks. I'm removing the masking fluid. Next I'll go over the iguana again with more glazes that will establish shadows and start to suggest more bumps. Right now it looks very loose and rainbow colored. The ink will tighten everything up, you'll see, but at this stage I remember thinking this thing looked really weird. Let's tighten up the eye. It's a golden brown color and around the eye are lots of wrinkles and folds and a variety of colors. I'm using a number one round brush to take care of this little stuff. The scales on its head are darker than the pink color I already have there, so I'm taking care of those with a mixture of orange and purple. The shapes are irregular, and I'm looking at my reference photo closely and trying to be faithful to what I see. Similar shapes are happening in this blue area. I'll paint them and go over some of the other scales a second time to make them look more three-dimensional. I've never had an iguana as a pet, but when I was a little girl I had a chameleon. I named him Crawley and I loved him very much. More eye details. I think at this point I became overwhelmed with how much work I had ahead of me. I painted this over the course of a couple of days and I was working as fast as I could. I felt oddly panicky as I worked at this speed and as a result this painting is a lot looser than I normally paint and I've sped everything up 30 times. Onto the bigger shapes around the mouth. These are a little less irregular and kind of reminded me of teeth. They're mostly cool colors and I'm painting the darkest parts on top of that purplish mid-tone. And then I'm taking care of those really big bumps. I love the variety of colors there. The iguana has dark bumps on its back that remind me of little volcanoes and I'm painting them with a mixture of orange and purple. I worked slowly because my pencil outlines were hard to see and it was easy to get lost. There's obviously a lot going on here, and while I could have left out one or two or put one in the wrong place, I knew that would throw me off for some of the details that will come later. So I was as faithful to the original as I could get. Next I'm painting the light side of the volcano bumps orange, and I'm adding more texture and darker details to the back. On the left side I've also added some light blue dots. They're the start of a different kind of texture. I'm returning to the eye for a few seconds to refine it and generally make it darker and more intense. The spikes along the back are that same pinkish orangish purple and I'm painting them quickly here. Once again I felt rushed because this project is for Inktober and I hadn't even picked up my pen yet. Felt like the branch could use another shot of orange and purple. I love the way they work together. Back to those annoying spikes. I'm adding another glaze of color on each of them so they won't look as flat. The nice thing about this project is that the ink will pull everything together and make up for a multitude of sins. I've been neglecting the bottom half for a while. Time for another layer of dark purple shadows. And now for the fun part, ink. I'm using black gel pens. They're Pilot G2s in sizes 05, 07, and 10. 
I'm going to use the 07 for most of this and the 10 for the thickest lines. I'll use the 05 for the skinniest lines. You can get these pens pretty much anywhere. They're not waterproof, so don't think you can draw with them first and add a layer of paint on top without making a mess. Make sure your paint is dry before you get going. As you can see, I'm mostly just outlining the shapes I've painted and making a few new ones here and there. Do I need to tell you how satisfying this is? It was a blast. When I was a teacher, my students always thought watercolor was super tough, so I came up with assignments that paired watercolor with ink, and they enjoyed those a lot more. I love the variety of shapes going on here in the head. I think reptiles or animals with fur or things like rocks and trees are perfect subjects for watercolor and ink. Some of my favorite illustrators combine watercolor and ink, and when I was younger, I used to love it when National Geographic featured illustrators who worked this way. The upper back has some open areas that I'm not going to do much with, and the spikes are going to look a lot better with these lines tightening them up. The tiniest scales are in the lower half of the picture, and I drew some planning lines first to sort them out. Then it's just a thousand little circles. This is tedious work for sure, but it's also pretty easy. I tried to add a little variety in there, and in general the scales are bigger in areas that aren't wrinkled or along an edge. I think this leg was the most challenging in terms of scales. They overlapped, changed shape, and sort of rotated as I went around that bend in the leg. I added some small black shadows here and there. If you look at the lines closely, there's a little sloppiness going on, but when viewed as a whole, they make a certain amount of sense. I powered through the purple shadows with a cramped little squiggle along with some straighter lines. If you ask me, I think you can do what you want to in the shadows. And then it's back to the tiny circles under the chin. The addition of black to your painting will make it darker in general, obviously, so if you're one of those people who paints with a lot of light pastels, you might be surprised at how much this changes what you do. I really love the way the patterns look on top of watercolor. It's kind of like stained glass. I like the way the blue seems to drain down to that big oval scale. The back is about half tiny circles and half variety marks and dots. People often tell me that my patience blows their minds, and things like this can be hard to do in a single sitting, but in general, watercolor is so much fun and so interesting to me that it doesn't really seem like work. Okay, home stretch. I hope you enjoyed my humble offering for Inktober, and I encourage you to try this yourself, particularly if you're having trouble with watercolor. And here's my finished iguana. Thanks a lot for watching.